Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today, I'm so excited to have the amazing Jason Christoph with us. Now, Jason Christoph is a self-sabotage expert who also runs an international self-sabotage coaching school. Jason discovered many years ago that manipulative psychology, behavior modification, brainwashing, mental conditioning and mind control are continually weaponized against the public by media and government to make the public easier to control, govern, lie to, manipulate, coerce and steal from. Jason's work is dedicated to exploring, discussing, exposing and offering solutions to these modalities of covert public control. Now, if you're not interested by now, I don't know what's going to interest you because even that introduction just blows me away. And I just said to, to Jason before we went on air is that it was like there's so many questions that I have and because this is my jam, this is something I really love to learn about. So. Welcome, Jason. I'm really excited to have you all the way from Mexico. Yes, JJ. Thanks for having me on. We got the times right and we're both ready to go, which is great. Fabulous. And uh, and, and what made you, so you're, you're originally from Canada, aren't you? Yeah, I've, I've lived in Canada all my life, except for the past eight months. I, I moved away. I sold my hard asset businesses up there as well. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not regrouping down here, but the International Self-Sabotage Coaching School uh, keeps me very busy. And there's a bit more freedom down here in Mexico. I'm not too sure. I'm hoping it lasts a long time. But when I left Canada, things were getting quite draconian in yeah. regards to the government having their way with the public. And of course, I mean, I'm in the line of business uh, of propaganda and mind control, behavior modification and brainwashing. So you could see most of the attack, uh, the foundational uh, attack on the Canadian public was, you know, using the same techniques that I teach across the world. So I knew nothing was really on the up and up and it was just best to retreat and, and you know, take things in from a distance. Yeah. Did it, did it surprise you? Jason, even knowing all of this stuff, did it surprise you that it happened in Canada? Like for me, it was, I suppose I was really naive because, again, a lot of the strategies I understand as a coach and I've learnt from a coaching perspective. But I never, ever thought a couple of countries that I would have thought of is not Australia, <laughs> you know, right. with free loving, you know, that it wouldn't happen here. Uh, and Canada, like I've never been to Canada, it's on my, my bucket list, uh, but I just never thought it would happen to Canada. Was that surprising for you? It wasn't really surprising given my background knowledge in how chemicals upregulate mind control. Yeah. So humans, even if you were to go get a natural human out of the jungle, and you can still put them under mind control based on certain modalities. But those modalities have a lot greater effect if your victim is chemically infused. And in Canada, the chemical infusion sort of agenda over the past 20 years has been very th fast and furious. And you can see there's a lot of decay in, in Vancouver with, uh, they've just legalized narcotics in Vancouver. Any narcotic, you're allowed to have several grams or several days worth of, you could have heroin, you could have fentanyl, you could have cocaine, and you can walk openly in the town now without any sort of repercussion. Uh, mar marijuana and marijuana products are legal coast to coast. And alcohol, of course, got new alcohol guidelines only five years ago from the government. The new healthy guidelines for drinking alcohol in Canada only five years ago are 15 drinks a week for men and 10 drinks uh, per week for women. And if you were to go to the CIA handbook on mind control, you'll notice that narcotics, marijuana, alcohol, they're all in, you know, sort of the top 20 of chemicals that enhance mind control. This is what a lot of people don't understand is that the propensity to put a victim under mind control and, and bend them to your will has a lot to do with how chemically infused they are. So I was not really surprised because when you have this there's so much alcohol 
and and mar- THC marijuana. And what's funny is that caffeine ranks the highest out of all the chemicals uh, in the in the world. That's sort of more commonplace to put people under mind control. So I knew it was just really a matter of time because everybody in there is uh, chemically infused in one way or another. Yeah, and if you look at the movies, and I know I gave up alcohol completely about five years ago, and the clarity and the even just dealing with day-to-day stuff and I you know I wasn't I wasn't you know a, a really heavy drinker but even so I really felt the difference of just completely giving up but but it was also about the 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 social aspect of it and the conditioning that you know when there's a you know, when there's something uh, to celebrate, what do you do? You have a drink. Um, we, you know, when there's something, uh, and when you look at the movies, you see them, if it's celebration, they drink. If it's something they're stressed out, they drink. And they're always got this coffee in their hand. You know, it's so, we're so conditioned to have coffee and alcohol. Yeah, and there's, there's reasons. I mean, everything plays a part. The whole sort of mind control agenda functions more like a watch. Uh, the average watch has 150 pieces to it, and they all work together to tell the time or accomplish one goal. And what you're saying is the base, the base brick or the base cornerstone of all mind control is repetitive content. And I explain this always in my talks or in my interviews, we'll get this out of the way regarding how someone is placed under mind control. And the great, it's a great story to remember because it's the best love story you'll ever hear. Because the part of the brain that's easily put under mind control in negative ways is a part of the brain that absolutely loves you. So I always have this prop here, and I don't know if this is, is this just going on video or is it going to go on a podcast? It'll go on, as well? both. It'll go on both. Yeah. Okay. So we can tell the people visually that I'm holding up to the screen, just basically an envelope sized piece of paper that's being folded here. So it looks like a list, like a waiter's list at a restaurant. And this represents the part of the brain that's really easy to put under mind control. And this part of the brain loves us, wants us to survive, wants us to be safe. And it has this function by which it accomplishes that. It looks out through our eyes and our ears, and it literally records the, your entire life. And I know this is hard to believe, but this is all documented. Yeah. It, your, every megapixel, every millisecond of your entire life goes on this list. But how does that make you safer? How does this system make you survive longer? Well, it doesn't only compile your, compile your life, life onto this document, it sorts your environment and everything you've ever done or heard for repetitive content. Now, human behavior is simple. Humans like other humans that act, talk, and think like they do. So yeah. as, as it sorts for repetitive content, you sort of tacitly identify what the bigger herder is doing, thinking, and saying all the most repetitive content, which is splashed all over the list at first, percolates to the top. The top becomes a script. And that script is acted out outside your conscious awareness. And there's many, many examples of this. And you can find, you know, I could send you some, I might even describe some later on in the talk. But basically, the most repetitive things you've heard the most repetitive things that you think and the most repetitive things that you've seen over your lifetime become sort of a safety guidance system. Now, this used to work really good when you lived in a village out in the forest 500, maybe 5,000 years ago, because all you would be getting is repetitive content from nature or what they call God or the creator or from your loving family. And this sort of behavior defensive system has been hijacked. And this part of the brain can't tell the difference between real time, screen time, and imagined thought. Mm -hmm. So when you're watching the screen and you're seeing the most repetitive content on your screen, and I'll give you an example. 
In 2001, there was a movie called Gone in 60 Seconds with Angelina Jolie and Nicolas Cage. It was a movie about car theft. Nicolas Cage was a retired car thief. His brother in a small town was having a problem with the local thug. The brother owed some money and the thug heard that his brother, Nicolas Cage, could steal cars and to even the score and expunge the debt. Nicolas Cage was called to steal 100 cars in one night. So very repetitive about car theft. And the people who rule us know this. When, and again, when you're sitting in the theater watching Gone in 60 Seconds, given the subconscious mind's loving protection mechanism doesn't know the difference between real time, screen time, and imagined thought, it actually thinks you're sitting in a car theft tribe. Yeah. It knows that the most repetitive content would be car theft. It knows to be safe in a car theft tribe, it's probably best to, the safe card to play is flash the gang signs where you are, which is car theft. Yeah. And when that movie was released in Burnaby, BC, Canada, car theft went up 70% in the first four days. And then investigation by other police forces also saw the car theft, but only in the towns where the movies were released. Wow. And you're not, if you interview anybody in a movie theater and say, can the repetitive content of your movie influence your behavior? They'll say, absolutely not. But the people who rule us have a, have a saying, what's on the screen in the morning will be on the street at night. Whatever they want you to engage in, they just make repetitive throughout all your movies and they give you the fake freedom. You go to the Cineplex, heavy emphasis on sin. Uh, they hide it, spelling it C-I-N, it's S-I-N. Yeah. And you have the options of eight different movies, one with The Rock, one with Denzel Washington, one with Morgan Freeman, you know, one with Brad Pitt. And they don't care which one you go to because they control all the movies and they will riddle the content that they want you to emulate, mimic and copy in all the movies. It doesn't matter if it's a space uh, scene or a space drama something in outer space. It could be a cowboy flick. It could be an action thriller. It could be a murder mystery. All the same content, all the same themes, all the same ideas are riddled throughout the movies and you will exit the theater and literally act those out. Another example is The Queen's Gamut. It was a show on the Netflix and it was a uh, sort of, I think it was a movie about chess but it was also repetitively heavily repetitively weighted the girl was a alcoholic and a drug addict a prescription drug addict but we would see chess sales went up on amazon thousands of percent after mm -hmm. the movie was released and there's so many more examples i could give the average person is not aware that the repetitive content on their screen really controls their behavior outside their conscious awareness because this loving part of the brain is simply trying to do what it's always done and keep us safe by making us bond with the majority, get, make us get along, you know, go along to get along with the majority mm. and people please and kind of kowtow and take a knee to the majority. And there's a lot more going on, but that's the basic foundation of say self-sabotage is that if you watch any show today or any movie, there will be hidden content in it that will always put you in a sort of cruise control into your worst life because of how the subconscious, the subconscious mind pathway operates. Does that make any sense at all? Yeah, 100%. And I think that the challenge with all of that is also... I suppose one of the things that I've noticed in the last two years is the is understanding or even having some awareness around because people say, oh, would the you know would would the government do this? You know, would they? Why would they do this? And, and again, if I take it back to my naivety in regards to uh, living in Australia, and I've travelled a lot in my time. I love to travel. 
And, you know, I would go to other countries and I'd think, gee, how fortunate are we? We're not, you know, a communist country. Uh, and and underneath it was all, it was it was always this, this belief that I'm looked after here. You know, we're different here. And so when the pandemic or some people call it the pandemic happened, it was like, you know, is this real? Like, would did, you know, would somebody really intentionally want to hurt you? Would the government intentionally, intentionally want to hurt someone? And I think that reality for people in Australia, particularly, I can't speak for anyone where else. I think it's such a, 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 like, it's just sort of out of their awareness that this could possibly happen that, you know, you talk about cinema and sin in it. <laughs> you know, are there people that really want to hurt people? You know, that's that's something I think is hard for people to actually comprehend. Yeah, it, it's very important to know that these kind of discussions are always based uh, better to look through the lens of mind control. Yeah. And if you look at a great book by Dr. Juice Merlu called um, Rape of the Mind, that's what it's called. He will clearly elaborate on the fact that confusion makes you more susceptible to mind control. So I didn't tell the, fu the, the full love story <laughs> of the part of your brain. It's even a greater love story than I told. I told the love story of the subconscious, which we call the doorman number two. There's a equally loving part of your brain called the doorman number one. And they're like bouncers uh, always trying to protect you. So doorman number one is our conscious mind. Yeah. It uses its eyes. It uses its brain. It's got this, you know, very logical and analytical way of looking at problems and solving problems. And doorman number one is always front and center in your defense. The subconscious that I'm talking about is there, it's active, but it's even more active when doorman number one is confused or poisoned. So they work in tandem, sort of like two bouncers at the door of a nightclub. The strongest, most effective defense mechanism based on this loving obsession with you is using of the eyes, scanning the complete environment, scanning the savanna, downloading information and making logical, rational solutions to problems. The doorman number two, the subconscious that we've already described, is always kind of looking over the shoulder and assessing the effectiveness of doorman number one. If doorman number one is confused, it means it's analytical IQ and brain power is not up to par. It gets noticed right away by doorman number two and doorman number one gets the hook and, and doorman number two says, you're looking confused. You're acting confused. You're really off center, why don't you go hit the shower and I'll come to the forefront with my defense mechanism, which is simply compliance, obedience, mm -hmm. taking a knee and being a people pleaser. These yeah. are the two interchangeable swapping defense mechanisms that you have. Confusion is 12 years of government school indoctrination that teaches you the government would not do it. I'm just trying to address the yeah. confusion and where it plays in your mind control. And then the government, they've told you in the government indoctrination camps, 12 years that the government would never hurt you, even though every Holocaust ever executed on the public has been done by the government. Yeah. The 12 years of indoctrination has convinced the public that that was the past. Governments have really come to the surface and they're, they're altruistic now. And so now the governments are attacking like the very early stages of any other Holocaust and the confusion is done on purpose. This is not an accident. When they get up and they're aggressive or they change their uniform or they say one mask will do or no masks or two masks or three masks and you're reeling because none of the messages are congruent, I want you to know they're, they're playing 
all that out of the psychological mind control textbooks textbook from Tavistock Institute in the UK in the CIA in the United States. Yeah. And when you talk about being logical, there, there's so much in the last two years that you look at and you think it just does not make sense. And some of it's like laughable <laughs> um, and and people are still buying it. Do you think that there are people more, this is, this is one thing that has challenged me because there's some really intelligent people that I know that, have fallen under the spell of of um, being you know being manipulated very easily. Do you think that there's you know what what makes it different where there's other people that go hold on a minute something's not right like what is there a commonality with these people that are questioning uh, more than being manipulated? Yeah, well, intelligence the the base phonetic foundations of the word intelligence is intel, which means you have the ability to tell yourself internally what's going on. Yeah. If the subconscious is in charge, it doesn't care about what's going on. It just wants to be safe. Yeah. And it will comply with the herd just to satisfy basic safety requirements. People yeah. that are questioning it usually have developed their ability to tell themselves what's going on through what's called the painful rite of passage uh, or the dark night of the soul. They take the rite of passage from child to adult. People that have never had any failures or major pain in their life usually have not done this process called individuation. Individuation in psychology is the ability to recognize your ideas and yourself and your dreams and your path as different than the tribe. Yeah. And, and you need a lot of pain and failure to get to that point. And in ancient times, in ancient societies, like in ancient Sparta, individuation or the rite of passage from child to adult was so important, they would have the rituals to do it. So at 14 years old, the men at in sparta would be put outside the city walls for seven days and they had to survive on their own they had to break the bond with the mother they knew this was the very dangerous bond in order to like it sounds mean but for the man to leave the tribe he has to break his bond with his mother he has to know where he's going to sleep and he would have to know where he was going to sleep if he's outside the city walls and the Spartan woods. And I've been to Spartan, Spartan, Sparta there. They used to be full of gray wolves. So it's very dangerous. They had to decide when to go to the bathroom, when to eat, when to set up the fire. Should I sleep all night? Everything that was comfortable. So it was a painful rite of passage. And a lot of the men didn't make it back. The wolves won the person and that maintained the society Yeah. because weak men destroy societies. And even if maybe the wolves, and this is how crazy the ritual got in Sparta is sometimes the wolves weren't just around and the 14 year old would have an easy seven days. And if the young man came back and he still didn't, mature or go through the process of individuation if he didn't become a strong leader if he was still a child in an adult's body eventually by the age of 18 or 19 they would actually sneak into intent and murder him wow. and although that sounds really fatalistic and dark and satanic it's the only way to maintain the strength of the tribe and then we see today that Again, if you look through the lens of mind control, the government is purposely making sure no one feels any pain mm. because the pain and the failure are needed to produce mature adults. So this is why they pass kids in school when they're meant to stay behind. This is why no one finishes last in a race anymore. They're safe zones. You're not allowed to give a uh, thumbs down on YouTube anymore. There's no thumbs down. And even in California, you don't have to write the SATs because if you fail, you feel bad. But when you rob a person and it is robbery, 
you rob a person of a failure, you're going to keep them as a perpetual child. You're going to infantilize and bubble wrap the entire society. And that bubble wrapped and infantilized society is the reason the Spartans would do what they did because that society will collapse under its own weight. And we see it, that darkness and, and Satanism literal Satanism through the religion, satanic religion has infiltrated all our institutions because our men are weak, our women are weak. And so again, go back to the watch analogy, there is so much involved. This is another reason the government is saying you can't fail the kids or everybody, or you know, you offended someone. Community standards is a based on emotional reactions right? You offended someone, someone got upset. Well, heaven forbid they get upset and go through the individuation process so that they, they become mature and an adult. The government knows you cannot control and rule and steal from a tribe of empowered, vital and healthy adults. Every, everybody, it's just a lot easier to control dependent, infantilized and overweight and unhealthy people who ride around in motorized scooters because you can just literally lop their heads off whenever you wish. And I'm, I'm not too sure if people are aware, but that day might be coming if people don't really start looking at what's going on. Yeah. And there's yeah, this self-reliance on the government that, that are looking after, you know, after you. Um, and I think the, you know, you mentioned tribe quite a bit. And I, and I, I realized that a lot of the stuff that's happened in the last couple of years really tap into the need to fit in the need to you know and, and things that were things like uh, the compliance of saying wearing a mask for instance it was very visual and very evident who was complying and who wasn't and it's inter it was even interesting exercise for myself because walking into say, a supermarket without a mask, even though I knew for me it was the right thing to do, I still felt in my gut this feeling of not being part of a tribe. And it was a really interesting learning for me to go through that process of not fitting in because you're not doing what everyone else is doing. Uh, and that is so powerful and I always knew that but to live it and live through that and to be also uh, I suppose questioned or mocked by people because you're doing something different it's really challenging and that's the psychology of it is you would actually be feeling because the subconscious will generate the feeling that you're not fitting in. Yeah. So it would look, look through your eyes, you know, just like it. I mean, that's how it's loving defense mechanism works. And it would have put on this list. I'm holding the list up again for everybody in the podcast world. It would have tabulated on the list that the mask was very repetitive in the environment. And the safe card to play was to flash the gang signs of the mask wearing tribe and put your mask on. And if you ignored that push, this emotional push to fit in, it will generate this massive tsunami of nervousness mm -hmm. because it's, its job is to make you fit in no matter what and fitting in with the mask. I mean, you can see how that defense mechanism can be manipulated because you're not safe wearing a mask because you're breathing in your own carbon dioxide. Yeah. And here's the other psychological rub people should understand is that when you're not getting oxygen to your brain in the proper amount and you're re, you know, you're recirculating carbon dioxide, the first bouncer backs away. The first doorman, the conscious mind is, it can't facilitate its brain function, it's picked up by the whole metabolic system, the defensive system of I'm going to take care of it with my brain goes and takes a shower, the subconscious looks out and says, hey, conscious mind, you're not getting enough oxygen, nothing, something's going wrong, your brain function starting to fail, why don't you go take a shower, clean up a bit, rest up a bit, I'll come to the forefront with my defense mechanism while you're getting your act together. But the subconscious defense mechanism is compliance, obedience, people pleasing. Yeah. So 
you can see why they mask the person because in all, and this is an old, old study. If you go to Kathy O'Brien, she is a, a mind control victim, Kathy O'Brien with a C, and she, you'll find her on Odyssey or BitChute. She came out 30 years ago and say she came out of some of the deepest, most elaborate mind control experiments ever done on a human being. And someone managed to break her mind control and have her write a book. But she said Michael Jackson was in the program and he always wore the mask and they would mask the children. And I remember, because I'm 52 years old, but I do remember Michael Jackson wearing a white medical mask many times, mm -hmm. and not only in Asia, but around Europe and even in North America. And that she said he was in the program and that's why he had a hard time to him. It becomes normalized. And then anything that's normalized equates to safe in the subconscious mind. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's interesting when, when we think about critical thinking, one of the things that I found interesting at this, you know, two, two years ago where, when everything was sort of starting was that even from the beginning, because there was there's there's so much um, manipulation and brain control, all of that's happened, you know, for two years now, over two years. But what surprised me at the start was when there was some really good evidence of things that people should look at. And I know for me, I had friends and family that I would say, look, just have a look at this. Just look at it. Just be, you know, just have a look at it. And they wouldn't look at it. <laughs> it was like, yep, no, I don't want to look at it. Or they'd say, yeah, I'll just leave it there. And I'd say, did you look at it? No. And that was really surprising for me, to, even at the beginning, that people weren't having a look at, as you know, logical stuff and stuff that was really crucial and life to me it was like this is this is life or death you know this is in my head oh, this is life and death just look at it and then if you disagree that's fine I found that really challenging Jason like it was like I, I and because being a coach I've always you know said you know you, we've got to just keep open with information keep challenging our own old beliefs and and stuff and I found that people just weren't doing that um, why do you think that was? Because you weren't really asking them to read. You were asking them to challenge their personal safety in the tribe. Yeah. You, you think it was a request to read or take in new information, but you are actually challenging their safety because they're not confident enough. They haven't taken the rite of passage, that maturation process. They don't feel confident outside the tribe. And the more infused with caffeine they are, the more alcohol they've been drinking. And this is why alcohol is such a big part of our culture. It is the second most repetitive theme in all Hollywood movies. Caffeine is number one. Coffee cup, coffee mug, coffee shop, or a coffee machine on the back counter you're you're talking chemically infused people which have no ability to put the logical bouncer the first bouncer back out on his stoop yeah he is he has been in the shower for so many years you that person's psyche might forget that he's even part of the defense of duo yeah so the the compliance the obedience and the government is very clever too that it expanded 50 years of government employment. So there's paycheck mind control. Uh, there's chemical mind control, there, you know, group-based mind control. They all come to a head. Like if your tribe is the government, like if your protective tribe is the government, you're, it's not, you know, this, the subconscious mind, which downloads uh, images and, and thoughts at 11 million pieces of data point a second. It's not so hard and it doesn't take a long time to figure out. You probably don't want to go against the government tribe if you're living in the government tribe. Yeah. And you talk so, a lot about the, you know, the say alcohol or uh, caffeine. And, and I know, and I noticed particularly when I went to the U S uh, I was shocked. And that was a few years ago now, because I haven't been able to travel, but I, I realized all of these ads for pills, you know, pop a pill for this, get, you know, you've got a headache, pop a pill. So there's so many different substances that people are so addicted to. 
that you yeah. know that yeah again all part of it yeah. because most of what most of the pills you're talking about are painkillers yeah and again if you go maybe read dr mark mcdonald the psychiatrist from la he will say you need pain and failure to do the individuation process which makes you a mature adult so not only with the pain killing like caffeine kills pain alcohol kills pain thc kills pain painkillers kill pain antidepressants kill pain so not only there's two facets the ruling class is accomplishing with the painkillers is that the person who's always painkilling never gets to feel the real pain to make them a mature adult mm -hmm. and then the chemicals that are doing the painkilling they send that first level bouncer to the back because the chemicals screw up the brain function to the point where that protective entity the first you know the first bouncer is relegated from his position and the reflexively obedient order follower come comes to the forefront and that's the only defensive bouncer you got on your team at that point is do as you're told say you know think what you're supposed to think do as the tv tells you and everything's going to be all right and of course there's no safety in that it's yeah. fake safety like there's no safety there's perceived safety because of how this defense mechanism is designed, but there's no real boots on the ground safety doing what the government telling everybody to do right now. There is only long term detriment and no safety to be had, but they're manipulating the process. So people go in the direction that the rulers want the public to go in. Yeah. What would you say? How would you say for people to protect themselves? from being manipulated and you know we're talking about the government and, and what in the last couple of years but there's you know it could be going into a training room for instance and being manipulated by the speaker you know what do you think people can do to help protect themselves um there's a whole long list of things we're, we're doing a documentary in the fall that will unveil them all oh awesome. but yeah, it's called planet mind control. I think how the government and media manipulates you into behaviors outside your conscious awareness. But the main advice would be just as, okay, so maybe the person's drinking coffee, drinking alcohol, watching the TV, and they're at like ground zero. They don't know that their TV is a documented military weapon invented solely not to entertain you, but to entrain you, not to inform you, but to misinform you. And everything that's on the screen is about psychological manipulation of your subconscious mind pathway. So they don't know any of that. Yeah. How about you just start looking? Why don't you do this? Watch your shows and look to the left, the right, the up and the down beyond the central field of view, which would be the actor. You will start picking up the coffee cups, the alcohol, the, and look at the themes of the movies, dark, hedonistic, weak men. Look for repetition because the repetition is the hacking of your subconscious mind. And if you, it, I'm going to tell you something. I'll tell the people right now, if you want to really see this effect in action, do me a favor, go to YouTube, punch in, there's a mentalist by the name of Max Major and put in Max Major AGT, which means America's Got Talent, but don't spell America's Got Talent. Just put AGT semifinal. So Max Major AGT semifinal. He's a mentalist. And if you want to see how fast and effective and how little time and how little repetition you need to modify the behavior of a viewer, go watch that video. Because Max Major comes onto the stage and his target is not only Howie Mandel from America's Got Talent, but 500 audience members. And this mentalist is an expert because he starts not live on the stage. He eventually gets live, but he plays a video for the judges. And this was during COVID and there was 500 viewers pumped in by closed circuit TV, but they're watching the video as well. And the video is on a Hollywood backdrop. There's a Hollywood backdrop bar. There's a Hollywood road. And Max Major starts in the bar recording this video. And he, he finishes on the road. 
And what you have to understand is you already know about the subconscious mind. I just taught you that it's obsessed with repetitive content and Max major riddles the repetitive content. He wants Howie's subconscious pathway to absorb in the video and the studio audience also watches it as well. So he Max major then after making people watch the video comes out live to the stage. Now he's live and he's interacting with the judges live. And he looks at Howie Mandel and he says, Howie, I'm going to take my watch off. I'm going to face it to me and I'm going to set a time that only I can see. And I'm going to take that watch. Once the time is set, I'm going to hang it on this little hook over here where I can't touch it very far away from me. And Howie, I want you to close your eyes. Spin, uh, imagine the hands of the clock spinning round and round. Now open your eyes. You saw where the hand stopped. Do you have a time? He says, absolutely. Uh, Max Major says, Howie, what's the time in your head? And he says, four o'clock. Max Major goes over, turns around the watch. It's four o'clock. Howie is baffled. He's <laughs> completely baffled. Then he says, Howie, I want you to close your eyes again. You're on a street. There's a billboard in the background. You see an image on the billboard. I want you to open your eyes, draw the image on the piece of paper and hold it to your chest. He tells the studio audience to do the same. Everybody close their eyes. You're on a street. There's a billboard with an image on it. Open your eyes, draw what you saw on the billboard on your piece of paper, hold it to your chest. He, Max Major had drawn on his own image four hours before the show started in a sealed em envelope that he could not touch. He goes over and gets a sealed envelope, unseals it, holds the image facing him, turns it around quickly and says, Howie, did you draw anything like this? And Howie Mandel is losing his mind. They're the exact same drawing. Howie's, while Howie is losing his mind, he, he says, studio audience, turn around 500 of your drawings right now. They're all the same image. Amazing. And the image was a sun. The sun symbology was riddled six times throughout that walk that he did in the Hollywood set. And the subconscious mind pathway took care of what it always takes care of assessing what environment you're in it assessed it as a sun tribe and if you're in the sun tribe you better flash the gang uh, signs of the tribe which is the sun now even more importantly was the four o'clock hack and the four o'clock hack was auditory this is where it gets even more scary there's a visual download of repetition and there's an auditory download. When Max Major was talking throughout his performance, he used the word performance, perform, before, and he also used the word, the plain word for, that's four phonetic fours copied onto the subconscious mind pathway. The subconscious mind said, we're in a four tribe and they're asking you for a number. You better regurgitate the four or you won't be safe. This is how scary yeah, this part of the mind is. And that hack was done with six sun symbols, four phonetic fours, and it took three minutes. The average person has seen 500,000 imprints of coffee, 800,000 imprints of alcohol, a million imprints of wine, two million imprints of weak men, three million imprints of single women, and five million imprints of doing what the government tells you to do. Yeah. So you, you think the average Joe, if Howie Mandel can be hacked on a show like America's Got Talent with 15 million people watching Max Major, the mentalist who did the hacking, not one bead of sweat, not one, because he knows that this part of the mind has a firm machine like operation. He he could have made Howie draw a duck, a knife, a canoe, a pumpkin. It wouldn't have mattered. He would have just had to change the repetitive content that was riddled through the background of where he was walking. The average person has no idea they have a subconscious mind. They obviously don't know how it works. And the average person of self-sabotage having a hard time in their life, poisoning themselves, poisoning their own children, getting a job instead of opening a business 
uh, having trouble with the relationship, drinking wine, smoking, doing drugs, watching the TV, having morning coffee. These are implanted into the public the same way the sun symbol and the four o'clock was implanted into Howie. Watch Howie Mandel's reaction. He believed the, the behavior he generated he believes that what he draw, who drew the sun, he believes the four o'clock was organic to him. And Max Major li literally said metaphorically, no, you're not in control. I'm in control. Yeah. I, I think it's just amazing when you're talking about all, you know, it, it, these messages are coming from all different directions, you know, from the music that's played. You know, and I noticed, you know, in the last two years, particularly, you know, you'd hear this doom when the, you know, when the uh, news would come on, it would be a frightening sort of, you know, yeah. sound. Um, and and all of these, you know, and I love language, you know, when you, you know, sin the ma sin, um, yeah. all of these messages that, and I and I love how you said, you know, watching something and looking from all different angles, you know, looking for what's, you know, what are they drinking, what's on the table. Uh, what are the what's the message? What's the hidden message? Um, and I and I'm really interested to to see you know I call it seeding, and and so they start planting seeds early, and then you go oh where's this going to happen? <laughs> you know what's going to happen with this? Um, and they plant it in you know from the news to um, to places like you know watching Friends or you know watching um, NCIS or that those sorts of things. Uh, you know, there's so many different ways to look at the messaging. And I know what's helped for me other than my coaching training is is to watch videos like you were talking about and really seeing how it's done. Um, and I'm trying to think of the other mentalist. What's the other mentalist? The Darren American Brown. Darren, Darren Brown. And, and when you were UK. Yeah. So I remember um seeing an old, old video of his and when he uh, it was uh, it was about a guy who wanted a present and how he used language similar. It, was, to it, it wasn't guy. just a guy. It was Simon Pegg, the movie That's star, right. the computer guy from Mission Impossible series. And Simon Pegg was asked by Darren Brown a week prior, what would be your best uh, birthday gift? And if he could write it down, Simon Pegg, picked a leather jacket and he put it in a sealed envelope and put it in his wallet and then a week later darren brown used the same auditory hacking method and people can look this up very easy on youtube darren brown and simon Pegg. it'll come up right away darren brown is d-e-e-r-a-n or even e-n it's not d-a it's d-e yeah. and he literally mind controlled Simon Pegg on the spot using auditory repetition to literally make him believe on the spot that his best birthday present was not a leather coat. It was a red BMX bike. And that's because he riddled the language with red BMX bike um, inferences to the yeah. point where the repetition of the bike was safer to uh, bond with. And yeah. that was such a clever sort of hack. And it proves that if you're listening to the movies, you're going to sleep with the movie, like you're not watching it, you're just hearing the sound and you're listening to your mainstream conventional radio. This is the power that this group has mastered. And this sort of information of how to control the behavior of humans can be found in the Egyptian book of the dead. Wow. It's not, it's not new. And the people we yeah. are dealing with are their older groups. They're yeah. Very old and ancient. The secret society phrase that gathers so much conspiratorial theorist labels. Um, these, this is where this information is stored and housed and executed on a generation by generation basis upon the un, uninformed public. Yeah. So, uh, Jason, I could speak to you for hours. <laughs> I knew this would be a challenge to, to keep it in time. But, Jason, what would be, before we get into our fun questions at the end, what would be any advice you would give 
to people listening right now? I would just, because I know a lot of people will think it's kind of crazy, but the only way out of any addiction or bad situation is to flood your subconscious mind pathway with positive things because it is a machine. And if you can expose yourself to positive images, positive imagery, positive podcasts, don't listen to conventional radio, do not watch movies, do not watch TV, unless they're enlightening, unless they empower you, unless it's teaching you something, this entertainment, it's not entertainment, it's entrainment. And you'll just and you know, you do what everybody else is doing, you're going to get what everybody else is getting. But if you do want to start listening to the radio, and keep doing it and watch movies and TV shows, start watching the background because that's that's where they hide their things. Yeah, that's where they hide everything. Look for the coffee cups, the alcohol, um, even in karate. Was the karate kid? The, yeah. The, oh, Cobra Kai. I hear you. We have been watching that, I have to say. Co- Cobra Kai, and I always watch the background, and I'm probably the only one that saw two or even three similar repetitive contents that were hidden in the background. It was a gun with a line through it, like no guns. Like if they went to a restaurant, I saw it on the wall. I saw it at a bar and I think I saw it somewhere else. It was, it was a no gun. And of course that is, you know, these, these repetitive based sorcerers trying to really imprint people's subconscious mind pathway that guns are bad and of course, all Holocaust will occur once the public is disarmed. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jason. You've, uh, you've just your knowledge is outstanding, and I absolutely, as I said, I could speak to you for hours. How can people get in contact with you? Well, they can email me, uh, Jason at freedom from uh, self sabotage dot com. And I can put them on my private email list where I'll slow drip this information. I always look at the news of the day, mostly through the lens of mind control and brainwashing, not to really analyze it as in good or bad, but just so that people can understand, are you aware you're getting manipulated through repetitive content, through fear, through chemicals? I mean, their biggest trick is they use repetition-based mind control to make you eat and drink chemicals that improve mind control. That's a pretty, that's pretty steep trick. You got to really watch for that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you so much. Now wait, let, let's get into these rapid fire questions. Are you ready? I've got 10 for you. I think I got 10 for you or maybe okay. nine. I don't know. I did count. Them. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, what's the best piece of advice given to you? Um, best piece of advice. Don't eat so much. <laughs> um what's your favorite book favorite book i would say uh natural strategies that can save your life by dr russell blaylock i love it i haven't read that one who who would play you in a movie oh uh matt dillon yeah (laughs) love it what's one thing on your bucket list um like a month vacation in, in Greece in a villa overlooking the blue water. Oh, love it. Love yeah. it. If you could trade lives with anyone for one day, who would it be and why? I would trade um, maybe Laird Hamilton, the surfer. Yeah. He, he's the only man, he's the only human out of 30,000 physical and mental evaluations done by the health guru paul check he's the only one that passed them all so i'd like to sort of be in his body and see what it feels like to be perfect i <laughs> love it uh where is your favorite holiday destination you might have already answered that it's uh it's anywhere where there's blue water but i really like greece and uh on my bucket list i would like to write an entire book uh you know, sharing the villa with someone I love. And uh, I don't know how long it would take me to write the book, but having great food every day would be fantastic. (laughs) If you could have any five people currently dead or alive to have dinner with, who would you choose? Wow. I think one of them would be Jesus. Uh, The other one would be JFK, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, Anybody that got kind of screwed over, Malcolm X... (laughs) 
<laughs> anybody that was a target of the deep state. I'm trying to think of a fifth one. Uh, it kind of eludes me, but I think you get the point. I'm, I would try to, hopefully they would remember a little bit about what happened to them or who, who planned it, because it'd be great to get their insight about what really went on there. <laughs> if you could have uh, one superpower, what would you have? Oh, I'm invisible. Invisible. Oh, no, that's yeah. my one. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that just being like anywhere and listening to conversations. That oh, would be I would I would only use it to go expose the uh, the secret societies, yeah. sneak, sneaking into all the groups and bringing a recorder with me. <laughs> what TV sitcom family would you be a member of? Uh, probably the Cosby Show. <laughs> the Cosby. <laughs> Probably the Cosby show because they were they were so serious and, uh, you know, they they wanted the best for their kids. It, it certainly wouldn't be mom or, or something like that or yeah. the family guy <laughs> <laughs> definitely or the Simpsons. Definitely not. What legacy do you want to be remembered for? That's your last question. Um, just trying to show people that. Their, their brain doesn't work exactly like they think it does. And it's very important to understand that you will be what you see. Yeah. And if you don't want to be something bad, you don't want to view or hear anything bad. And it'd be nice if we could all realize how this part of the brain really works and step outside the control grid that's being manufactured around us that is literally based on us getting tricked to enslave ourselves. I, I would like people to use this pathway for good instead of for evil. That's what I'd really like to be known for. Love it. Love it. Fabulous. All right. I'm ready for my questions. Okay. Here we go. What's your, <laughs> what's your favorite truth book, JJ? My ba favorite truth book? Yeah. The Bible. Excellent. Beautiful. What's your favorite truth documentary? Oh, uh, I can, well, what, what comes to mind straight away is uh, uh, Robert, is it Robert Kennedy? Yeah, Robert Kennedy, correct. Yes, yeah. um, the real Anthony Fauci. Yeah, okay. It. Okay, Love awesome. It. What about your favourite truth speakers? It's still RFK? Uh, yes, I absolutely love him. Um but I also love, and I'm still, you know, I, I suppose, uh, yeah, I, I'm really weary of any celebrities, um, particularly now, but I do love Tony Robbins' work. Yeah, Tony's being yeah. a little vocal. He's speaking up. Vocal. Very he's vocal. vocal. He, he's in Florida, so he feels like he's got backup, right? <laughs> uh, what's your typical breakfast? Porridge. Porridge. Particularly, yeah, particularly in the winter. I love porridge. It's like a a comfort food for me. Yeah, definitely. Makes you feel comfortable. Three things included in your perfect day. So if you had a perfect day, you had to plan it, what three things are guaranteed going to be in there? Definitely uh, reading. Yeah. I love to read. Definitely the beach. Oh, yeah. Love the beach. And uh, oh, I'd love a massage. Gee, imagine oh, a massage every day. <laughs> I, I think if you throw in some Greek food, I'm right there with you. <laughs> what uh, What's your best vacation spot? Like, what's your dream vacation spot? Oh, there's so many, but I absolutely love. Well, I love the beach so much. Um, so I would say something like, I loved Greece, like you. Yeah. Um, but then something else has come into my head, which is Paris. I absolutely love the city of Paris. I just think it's, it's just beautiful. It's got a lot of energy for sure. Yeah. What's the one thing people could do to make the world better, in your opinion? Wow, that's a great question. The one thing that people could make the world different is, well, is to serve. And what I mean by that is to stop thinking about yourself and to really live authentically serving others with no yeah. agendas. Yeah, do God's work, right? Absolutely, 100%.
I'm pretty sure a lot of people have forgot how to do God's work on this planet. They're going to remember eventually when the devil's at the door, but you might want to back out of it before that situation happens. Okay. Number eight, what's your favorite exercise? Is it cardio, weightlifting, yoga, or walking or other? Walking, 100%. Wow. I love to walk and I love to explore. So I can walk for ages just because I love exploring. Amazing. Favorite snack? Favorite snack? Oh, what would be my favorite snack? Oh, it depends. Uh, I'm not going to say coffee is a, a snack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if it is, if you're at the beach and you like a nice coffee, don't forget it zones out and brings out the, you know, sort of fuzzy pain killing part of the brain so that's I mean, that's why it's enjoyable if yeah. there's not if there's no serving to be done like if you're going to go serve the community probably best to have the conscious mind alert but <laughs> it does zone people out and make them feel good I, I i i only drank coffee for three summers in a row uh from 43 to like 46 so i know how it feels yeah, <laughs> yeah. um so no what would be my favorite snack um, if you're talking a healthy snack, it would be beautiful tropical fruits. Okay, how about an unhealthy snack? Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> that was easy, chocolate. The gateway drug to coffee. <laughs> okay, I got one more question for you, JJ. What's your what's your superpower? My superpower is first thing that comes to mind is love. So just come coming from loving and, and just being the best version of myself. So um, I would say love. And then the other thing that comes to mind is being an insatiable learner and serving others. So, um, you know, for me, you know, I often say insatiable learner because I think that the more that I challenge myself, challenge my belief, be open to new possibilities, um, I think that's definitely a superpower of mine. Yeah, that's a great superpower. And we need all the super friends together with their all different superpowers so we can uh, keep serving and keep teaching and, and keep going and keep energized and, and push back on this, uh, this group of maybe 10,000 people that really, uh, they're from our past and we're going to have to deal with them one way or another. They're going to deal with us. Yeah, 100%. But you know what? I think with great, as you said before, uh, you know, we grow with pain, right? And There's been a lot of growth. Yeah, we grow with pain. And I think that, um, you know, the, the last two years I've really felt, for me, there's been a lot of growth, but I've also, and I don't know if you've felt this too, Jason, is that, you know, I've, I've seen in the past, you know, I've always imagined if something happened how would I show up you know if the worst thing happened how would I ever show up and uh, I really to me the last two years I really did show up authentically and being able to look back my beliefs so strongly even when um, being challenged around me and I think that um, you know that's something that I you know I've experienced and grown as a person so I think uh, yeah yeah. And, and the great thing about it is that for me, I mean, I know I started to heavily put my trust in God only because evil was so obvious. I'm like, if this is, this is an evil force, it's almost yeah. like an evil spirit, yeah. you know, encapsulating weaker humans or something like that. There's a spiritual yeah. aspect yeah. there. I feel protected. Um, so there's been lots of people needing that sort of spiritual world to lean on and knowing what will be, what will be the, there's, there's people that are gifted and protected and we're going in that direction because the evil is just so obvious. It should be so obvious and people who can't see it, I'm not too sure if they're going to get the message in time, but this is an evil force. Evil is live spelled backwards. Anything that's anti-life is evil by definition. Yeah. And I love there's a verse in the Bible. I can't quote it word for word, but it's about, you know, um, it's about like evil, good, good, evil, you know, flipping it. And that's exactly when you're thinking about manipulation, 
how it is, is it's pretending something's good and it's not good. It's actually evil. Yeah. By the fruits, you shall know them. There isn't any good in shutting your business down. There's no, there's no good. And, uh, not being able to connect to people. It's been shown through the Institute of Heart Math, the heart chakra, the heart energy emanates at least six feet from the average human. That's where they got the six foot distance. So we couldn't connect heart to heart. We're getting isolated. And even on a psychological basis, any animal trainer will tell you the only, the best to train animals, you need them isolated. Like you, yeah. you, you can't train a dog when there's another dog. You tra can't train a horse when there's another horse. This is why they isolated us. But again, yeah. the, the, the amount of evil sorcery and evil calculation and this precise execution of evil has really convinced me that there's an evil force in this spiritual world and that goodness will have to rise in people who are going to survive here. Yeah, a hundred percent. Thank you so much, Jason. I absolutely, and I've written so many notes. And every time you put a, uh, you know, read this book, I'm like, I'm reading it. <laughs> Watch those videos. Watch that Howie Mandel video. You'll be very um, shocked at how easy it is to put people under mind control, and um, they don't know anything about it, and that's why it makes it even easier. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, so thank you so much. And those listening, please make sure that you follow Jason's work. And, yes, make sure that you get onto his, which I am, on your database where you can send some this great information. And your uh, the place, uh, Planet Mind Control, when's that coming out? I'm so interested in that. Well, we're starting to write the script right now. To be honest with you, it's going to be pretty easy to write. We have a videographer that's committed to putting my text to, you know, to cinema. And it's it's going to be pretty easy because we are going to start with the Howie Mandel video and a couple other videos just to make sure people understand how this part of the brain works, how easy it is to put people on mind control. It only takes minutes and no one ends up being like a zombie. You just, you know, you talk like yourself, you walk like yourself, you think like yourself, but you're doing things that make no sense whatsoever. And you're under the control of the controller. And then once the public, and it's going to be for free, there is no charge to it. And at the back end, I will offer access for a fee to my library of reprogramming modalities, hypnotherapy, wall art. And the great thing about having access to my library is that all addictions are covered in there, pornography, cocaine, marijuana, drinking. So you don't have to openly admit to anybody what you're addicted to or where your, your, your shortcomings are. You can enter the library, reprogram the subconscious mind pathway and get everything all tidied up in, in short order without really exposing what's, you know, what's eating at your soul. So it's going to be a very a tightly wrapped and very effective tool for teaching people what's going on, what, why there's a problem and how to solve any of these mind viruses that the media and the government has inserted into your mental hard drive. Fabulous. So, uh, yeah, so definitely with, with the call of the listeners, please make sure, yeah, you get onto your database so that you'll get, because you'll communicate once it's out to your yeah, database. We'll be, we'll be contacting everybody that knows me in the truth movement and that's from top to bottom. So I will be asking for one favor to yeah. circulate that documentary. Well, yep, I'll, I'll be happy to circulate as much as I can because I can't wait to to watch it. So oh, it's going to be wild, JJ. <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> I, be love, wild. I love wild, and I love something that just messes with my brain in a good way. But, yeah, well, um, I think when you get examples of that, with which um, you talk about that video. Uh, when you get examples and you see it in action, I think it's so, so powerful for people to see that. Uh, and it's not it's not magic. It is it's strategies that people use. Um, yeah. And once we can see that and we we look for that in whatever uh, you know we're seeing, even going shopping, going down the grocery, you know, grocery store and the music that they play and where they sit away pro product in the store i mean all of it is socially conditioning us all of the time so i think the more knowledge uh we can get in regards to that the better thanks so, jj thank you so much jason uh and i hope to have you back on the the podcast again because i know we haven't even touched self-sabotage and i'm really interested in that as well <laughs> yeah for sure um, and uh yeah i'd love to have you back on so thank you so much 
You're welcome.